morning. Good morning. Amen. I want to welcome you all to Word of Life Fellowship Center this morning. We're going to begin with our service. And I ask that you all just stand with me as we begin so we can all go before the throne of grace in prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. All hearts and minds clear. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come to you, Lord, to tell you thank you, Father. Thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for watching over us as we slept, Father God, and waking us up this morning, Father God, with our healthy hearts and minds, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to tell you that thank you for the love that you continuously show us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you allow us to show the same love to others that you show to us. Now, Lord, we just come together, Lord, and we just want to thank you for this, this time to worship you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we ask you to bless the instruments, Father God, those who are playing the instruments. Lord, bless the praise team, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just ask you just to anoint their voices right now, Father God. So an awesome, mighty worship and praise can go forth, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So the Spirit can move in here, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit which continues to dwell in this place, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to touch each and every pew, Father God, in this building, uh, each and every doorknob, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Each and every person that comes in here, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to move in their lives, Lord. And we just thank you for whatever it is that, 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 that's being done in their lives. Lord, we just thank you for healing, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that's coming forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For those who don't feel well, Father God, are sick or otherwise, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you for the service today. Lord, we ask you to bless the, 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 the word that's going to be coming forth, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless the person bringing the word, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So anoint their, their bodies, Father God, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, continue to let your Holy Spirit dwell with them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, so they can be able to speak the words, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you've given them. Lord, we just thank you for all that we are able to do, Father God, all the, the feedings that go forth, Father God. And we just thank you for the volunteers who came in and helped with that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless our government and city council, Father God, local and otherwise, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, bestow the wisdom upon them, Father God, that only you can give. Lord, and one last time, we want to tell you thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I ask that you can remain standing for the scripture reading and the word of the Lord be coming from James 1, 22 through 24. And they read it as such. But don't just listen to the uh, to God's words. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away and you forget what you look like. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing upon the reading of his word. I now will turn it over to the praise team. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. How
meet me here this morning at 10 so we can pray and uh, see what the Lord said. So I thank you for your humility, your willingness to just follow what God was doing. Wasn't it beautiful? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Yes. So there, there's something that can be said about the fact that God is looking just for willing hearts. Yeah. That's all he's looking yeah. for. And I, 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 slay, I laid in that hospital bed, and I'll share more next week probably. And I just said, Lord, um, I cried because um, our good brother, Brother Carl, uh, passed away. I found out he passed away um, the second day I was in the hospital. And I talked to my wife, and I broke down in tears um, because Brother Carl had been sick for the better part of a year. And the last Sunday he was here, uh, he had been asking me for week for months. He says, can I just figure out a way to play something in the service? Uh, he was a pipe organ extraordinary, um, especially with the hymns. And have been trying to find a spot, and, we, and it just so happened, and this is what, white, what, what, what the Lord did to wipe my tears. Um, the last Sunday he was here was a communion Sunday, and we were sharing at the Lord's table. And um, he got on the organ to play a hymn. And he couldn't really play it because his dexterity was off. You know, his motor senses were off a little bit. But he had a willing heart to worship at that particular moment. Little did we know that God was preparing him to transition. And he'd be gone two weeks later. And I cried because here's a man who didn't have all the gifts anymore. But he had the heart. He didn't have the ability to play like he used to. He used to command top dollar to play, because that's how gifted he was. And he no longer had that ability. His health was failing, but he had a heart to worship the Lord just one more time. Could you imagine if we came to church throughout the week and just said, Lord, if this is my last time, I'm gonna give you all that I have. If we went to work and said, Lord, if this is my last day at work, I'm gonna glorify you with everything that I have today. What a testimony, what a testimony. And so the challenge that, that God showed me through that is, we have to identify who we are as a church. Who are we looking to touch? And before we, before we even answer that question, let's consider two things. One, who did Jesus go to touch? And who did Jesus allow to touch him? Jesus was not concerned with touching the religious folks. He said, I'm here for the sinner. I'm here for the sick. They're the ones that need a physician. And then the woman that was filthy with the issue of blood that everybody else stayed away from, Jesus allowed him to touch her. Because he says, look, she may be dirty to you, but she needs a touch from me. And then furthermore, Jesus said the children, the babes in Christ. How dare we think that we could turn anybody away when Jesus said, bring them to me. So going forward, going forward, that is the mantra of this church. It has always been the mantra, but I think it needs to be repeated going forward. Facebook Live, Instagram, those that are in the house, I don't care if you're drunk, high, I don't care if you smell like the latest strain of weed. I don't care what you did last night. I don't care what you plan on doing later on. I don't care about any of that. If you need to see the Lord in a major way, this is the place where you need to be. You don't have to have on the right clothes. You don't have to have the right on dress. You, and when they get here, church, leave them alone. Let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost is going to do. We have to stop trying to clean fish before we catch them. That makes no sense whatsoever. Nobody cleans you, they let you get caught first. And for whatever reason, we get so uh, religious-fied and dignified to where we think that we need to change the rule book because we've been saying, baby, somebody remembers the day that you got saved. Somebody remembers how messed up you were. Somebody remembers how, how you need to be clean and you needed to be, have a process. Leave people alone and let them worship. Can we do that? Stop being messy. Stop being nosy. Stay out their Facebook page. You don't need to know their personal life. Just know that they're here to get something from the Lord. That's it. That's it. And if you, can, if you can't be friends with them on Facebook without judging their life, then unfriend them so they can come to church and worship without you staring at them like they're crazy. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. All right. I ain't even preaching. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So listen, listen, listen. Um, Brother Travis is here with his, with, his, with his beautiful children. Good to see you, man. For all of you that don't know, for all of you that don't know, this is the champ. He is, right, he right. is the professional bodybuilding champ. Um, don't get it twisted. We like to work out. He makes a living. This is what he does, all right? <laughs> yeah, we do like to work out. He makes a living. But um, he's doing another outreach, and he, he, the Lord put in his heart to bless the church. 
through this outreach. Every Saturday morning in Desert Highland Park at 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock. It started with boys, and now the video has evolved to some girls as well. They're doing a boot camp out there. Uh, and it's, it's socially distanced. It's safe. They're boxing. They're, they're doing all kinds of stuff. But he asked for simple donations to help with the program. And the Lord laid in his heart to donate those donations, donations to Word of Life. Now, the, amen, amen. Now, this is what I want us to understand. Amen. This is what I want us to understand about people in their process. Brother Travis hasn't been to church physically in about six or seven months. At the beginning of the program, when he introduced me, he says, this is my bishop, that is my church. Life happened, he was training for the shows and all that. I haven't been able to get to church, but this is my church. I bring that out because you, don't, you all don't realize how many people are part of this church that can't be here on Sundays, okay? There are brothers, there are sisters in the Lord, all right? So when you see me saying on Facebook, this is the champ, that's part of us. Yeah. So at his next show, when it's time for him to go on stage, when I say we're praying for the champ, I mean we are praying yeah. for our champ, okay? Right? Yeah. There's a diversity of gifts in the Bible, and not all of them revolve around preaching. Yeah. So just like I get up here and proclaim the gospel and try to make disciples with the word, this brother's on stage in the name of Jesus. Yeah. What, what likely play, I'm serious. What life's likely place? I went to a bodybuilding show and I felt the Holy Ghost. What in the world is going on? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just telling you, he can do it, all right? Listen, our speaker this morning has quickly, had quickly become one of my favorite speakers early on. Amen. And um, I say that, one, because she's my wife, but two, I say that because I have yet to see a pastor's wife, a bishop's wife, a first lady, who would boldly take the sacred desk with the word and tell her truth according to the word boldly and unashamedly, regardless of whose, whose toes she stepped on, because she stepped on hers the entire time. But over the last three years, I've watched a maturation and an evolving of a speaker, of a preacher, of a student of the word. And this last week, like normal, whenever she has to preach on Sunday or teach on Wednesday, we sat down and we discussed the merits of the lesson and this last week, I was blown away because our conversation went from um, uh, leader, pastor, and member, bishop and first lady, husband and wife, to iron sharpening iron. And I watched how she provoked me to think differently just in her thought process. And I said, okay, this is it. God is doing it. God is doing it. God is doing it. Listen, I'm excited about what God has for her on today. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about what God has for her on today. Uh, I, will, I will say this, I did the intro for our Black Student Union Taste of Soul in Desert Hot Springs. And I said, when I want Mexican food, I have a taste for Mexican food, I go get Mexican food. When I have a taste for soul, I want this program. I have a taste for the word today. I have a taste for the word today. After that, after that worship, now I have a taste for the word. And so on today, I'm going back to my corner, and I'm going to sit there and behave like the doctor asked me to do. But I'm going to take out my notepad, I'm going to take notes, and I'm going to feast on the word today. Because I know from a little bit that she gave me, it was she gave me an appetizer. And I had to stop eating the appetizers, I want the meal. And the meal is on the way. So I would ask Facebook Live, I'm introducing to some and presenting to other, my wife, our own executive pastor, Lady Tristina Shepherd. God on this morning. It's good to see your faces. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, I know that I'm still a little nasally and older. And when I got older, I developed sinus issues as well. And so it's not going anywhere until this wind goes someplace. So forgive me for sounding this way, but I believe the word is still going to go forth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So let's pray and we're going to jump right into it. Amen. <laughs> don't, don't do that to me, Sister Terry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not biting today. I'm not biting today. So Sister Terry, just let me know it's time to release the children to Children's Church. But before we do, understand that your children are going to be socially distanced in our fellowship hall. Amen? Socially distanced in our fellowship hall. They will not be in the children's room. They will be spread out in the children's and the fellowship hall. So if you would like for your children to go, they are more than welcome. But we completely understand if you would like for your children to stay with you. Amen? So now is the time for them to be dismissed. Amen, amen. You go head on, Elijah, with that hat. I seem to be talking to you every Sunday, sir. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right, so this morning, we are going to, um, well, let me give you a little bit of background of what we're going to be talking about. So this morning, we're going to be talking about how God is calling us to be resilient, right? He's calling us to be resilient. So as, as a church, we have to, as a church body, we have to get up. Amen? We have to get up. So a little bit of background on that for me is the Lord was telling me during this time of, you know, sickness and, and all of these things. And before my husband got sick and, and our family got sick and, and, and a lot of you, he was telling me, listen, the body of Christ is limping, right? The body of Christ is limping where we should be standing and we should be running. And he said, you know what? Let me talk to you first because I, I see you limping too, daughter. So let me talk to you first. And he did. He did. So this is what he was telling me about me and most of you. Amen. Amen. All right. So. Let me define resilience for you. So Webster defines resilience as this. The ability to recover quickly from difficulties, to spring back into shape, so to speak. So in other words, it's the ability to get up after failures, you know, hardships, pains, disappointments, sickness, all those types of things. It's the ability to get up and to get moving, to go forward. So that is resilience. That's what we're going to be talking about on today. All right, so as Christians, we're charged to be resilient. That's just the bottom line because we live in a fallen world, right? So our job is to make sure that we get up. Every time the world throws something at us, we get up. We don't lay there. We don't wallow in it. We get up because what? We're supposed to show Jesus in our walk, right? The world is supposed to look at us and say, hey, I see that light, something about her, something about him, right? They're not laying down and wallowing and pulling the covers over their head. They just, so-and-so just went through this. Sister so-and-so just went through that. And she's back at work. Amen. She's back serving. Amen. That is how we are supposed to be as Christians. So, we're the hands and the feet of Jesus, right? We are his hands and his feet. He wants us to get moving, right? He wants us to start making moves for the kingdom. That's our job. It's not the world's job. It's our job. But have you noticed that the world, they'll tell you quickly. I'm not a believer, but I do believe in, in helping others, right? I do believe in serving, you know, those less fortunate. So they're making moves, right? We're to do the same. So what have we been doing or not doing to command, it's for God to command our attention in this season? So think about that for a second. I want you to hold that in the back of your mind. What have you been doing or not doing to command God to demand your attention? Right? So COVID was a wake-up call. Right? It was a wake-up call for us. At least it should have been. Right? And I'm not saying that God put COVID, put the virus out there, that he delivered it to us. But I am saying that he allowed it to come over the entire land. The entire land, not just Desert Hot Springs, California, United States, the world was hit by COVID. Why? That's something you have to think about. The why is different for each of us. You have to think about your why. What's your why? So listen, after we ask ourselves why, you ask God, God, what do you want from me? What are you trying to teach me? What do you want me to do? What do you want from me personally? Because it's not about us all the time collectively, right? It starts with us individually first. So what does he want from you? I was starting to allow the Holy Spirit to let me know what he wants from me. So now you're going to have to listen and be attentive and find out what he wants from you. Amen. So, you know, quite simply, he let, he let me know. Yes. He let me know. And I had to put this in my notes to make sure that I, I, I said that. He let me know mm -hmm. that it's time for the body of Christ to get up. Get up, get up in the name of Jesus. It's time. It's time. It's no more time for complacency. It's no more time for business as usual. So whatever your business as usual is, it needs to change. If you're complacent, you need to get up and start moving. Right? That's just that's just it. That's no it's, it's no other no other excuse. No other excuse. So let's okay, let's look at Luke 19. 11, because I know you're like, a oh, pastor, where's the scripture? So here's a scripture for you. 
Luke 19, 11 through 12, Jesus tells a story of him leaving to go and get his kingdom and come back to retrieve his people, right? That, that's what that story, that's the bottom line for that, for that particular story. But when he left, he did so in trusting us with the life that was given to us by the shedding of his blood on Calvary. He left with an assignment for us to fulfill while he was gone. Because when he came back, he's gonna have a question for each and every one of us. And that question is, what did you do with the life that I gave you? Latoya can't blame it on me. I can't blame it on little Shayla. Little Shayla can't blame it on, 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 brother, on brother Tim. We have to stand flat-footed and look Jesus right in his eyes and answer the question, what did we do with the life that he gave us? Y'all thinking about it? What have you been doing? What have you been doing with the life that he gave you? Mm -hmm. All right, so listen. So as parents, right, when we tell our child something to do, we mean what we said and we said what we meant. Is that not right? There is no if, ands, or buts. There's no plan. I told you to do something. No, I'm meaning you to do it. So here, here's, a little, here's a little story for you. And you all look at Michaela. Michaela's a sweet girl. Love her dearly. That's our baby. But Michaela's a kid. Right? Just like any other kid. So I told Michaela, listen, Michaela, it's time for me to go to work. You know, you're going to go to school. It's time for me to go to work. Now, mind you, I'm just going to the living room because I'm working from home. Right? But it's time for me to leave your presence and go to work. So now, by five o'clock, when I'm done, I need you to make sure that your room is clean and that the dishes are, are put away and the dirty ones are in the dishwasher. Get the dishes together. Yes, ma'am. That's what she tells me. Yes, ma'am. All right, cool. I go to work, right? And we see each other in between, you know, eight and five. Of course we see each other. And I tell her by five o'clock. And she's a kid, so she waits to the very end to do what she needs to do. Amen. However, this particular time, it was five o'clock, and I'm like, oh, cool, I'm so glad to be done with work. All right, so I need to get in the kitchen, I need to fix something to eat, because I know they're gonna be hungry soon, and I got another li little one who lives with us, practically, Olivia. And, you know, Olivia, when it's time to eat, Olivia's like, what's for dinner, auntie? Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, I need to get in the kitchen, I need to get this food prepared. So I walk into my kitchen, and it's the same way it was when uh, at eight o'clock in the morning, right? Same way it was because the night before, the two of them were supposed to put the dishes in the dishwasher. I went to bed early; they didn't put the dishes in the dishwasher. So the, the kitchen looked the same. So I said, "Okay." So now I, I go on, mosey myself on down to my Kayla's room. She had the door closed, and I just hear her just talking, just going, just going. And so I open up the door. And to my surprise, her room looked like a tornado hit. Yeah. Two things I said, I need the kitchen clean and I need your room clean. I'm going away to work, but when I come back, I need to know that you've done what I told you, right? Mm -hmm. So Michaela gave me a bunch of excuses as to why she didn't do what I told her to do, right? Teach so there's consequences to not doing what, what your mom and your dad tell you to do, right? There's consequences to that. So I tell my kids, I don't want to hear your excuses. You had all this time because you get out of school at 11.50. It's now 5.05. I don't want to hear any excuses. So here's what you're going to do. And so commence the consequences to my Kayla. So that's just not about my Kayla. That's about us as individuals, as adults, as children of God. Jesus said, I'm going away. I need you to do something while I'm gone. This is what I want you to do. And when I come back, I want to make sure that you've done it. I'm going to ask you, point blank, what have you done? Did you do what I told you to do? What's going to be our answer? Amen. Because he's not going to want to hear any excuses. Amen. Parents don't want to hear an excuse. Our, our father ain't going to want to hear no excuse. Amen. So what are we doing? What are we doing? What kind of answer are we going to have for him when he comes back? Okay. That's, good. That's just a little stuff for you to ponder on for yourself. Don't worry about what I'm going to do. Amen. Just worry about what you're going to do. Because I'm not going to worry about what you're going to do because i got enough stuff to do for myself. Yeah. But if you need a little help, I'm always here. Amen? Because we are supposed to be there one for another. Amen. Right? As brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. But I can't walk your walk for you. 
I don't ever want to. And you surely cannot walk mine. You do not want to. I guarantee you, you don't want to. So, in thinking about that, um, our job is to make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. What he commanded us to do was to be fruitful and multiply, and that simply means to make disciples, right? Make disciples. Have you made disciples? One, 10, 100. If not, what are you afraid of? Mm -hmm. Are you afraid to speak your truth mm -hmm. about your love and your passion for Jesus Christ? Okay. Why are we not making disciples? Because the harvest is plenty. Amen. It's plentiful. Right? But the word says the laborers are few. Mm. So what are we waiting on? So look, like, the, the, okay, here's an example. So like the man at the pool of Bethesda. You guys remember that, right? In John 5. So the, the angel had troubled the water, right? It was troubled. And it was ready for anybody who wanted to get in. But he laid there. Right? So long story short, the angel said, what, what, what are you doing? Why, why are you laying here? Well, basically, he's afflicted, right? And he was waiting for somebody to come and pick him up and put him in the water. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Too fast. Too fast. He was told to get up. Get up. Get yourself in the water. The water is troubled right now for you to get in and get your healing and get what you need. What are we waiting on? Are we waiting for somebody or something to come along and, and, to, and to pick us up and to put us in, our, in, 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 in the lane we need to be in, to get us going as to what we're supposed to do? Who are we waiting on? Jesus has already come and did what he needed to do for us. It's already been laid out for us. So what are we waiting on? He's already picked us up. He's already cleaned us up. It's us who decide to lay back down, who decide to get dirty again and get all lumped up again, right? That's us. So what are we waiting on? We have to learn how to be resilient. We can't wait on other people to come and make it right for us because that person's not coming. That person's not coming because even if a person does come, they can only do so much. They can only take you so far. The rest is up to you. How bad do you want it? Yeah. Whatever it is that you want, how bad do you want it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I stepped on my own toes mm -hmm. um, with this because I was actually literally listening to God as he had me type this up and, and, and do my study. I was listening, not for this per se, but for me. Don't listen just to listen because this is the message for today. Listen for yourself because God has a word for you. He wants to say something to you. He wants to prick your spirit and your heart and your spiritual ears Amen. to figure out what it is he has for you. All right, so since we've already been given the victory, Amen. the question is posed why were some of us still living defeated lives? Mm. Why is that? Why is that? We've been given the victory through Jesus Christ, yet we still live defeated. Why are we still not living? Why are we just existing? Why is that? The big question today is why, if you have not gotten that so far. The big question is why. There's a lot of whys. Why are we not living fulfilled lives? Because Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's what he wants for us, abundant life. But why are we living beneath our blessings? Okay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Putting, putting God in a box, I heard somebody say. Mm -hmm. Not trusting is another thing. Mm -hmm. Not trusting, not believing. Mm -hmm. That he is who he said he is in our lives. Not for the other people's lives because we believe for other people. But it's for us when we start doubting, right? Yes, yes. You can't doubt. You got to get up. You got to be resilient. You got to bounce back. You got to believe. Yes, yes. You got to believe. All right. So please read the chapter of Mark 24 when you get home because it's, it's, um, it's a warning. 
It's Jesus giving us a warning. He's letting us know not, not the exact day or hour that he's coming back, but that he's coming back soon. But in the midst of that, he's giving us warnings as to a lot of things that are going to happen before he gets back. These warnings we need to take heed of. He said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. It's happening all the time. He says there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. Meaning there are going to be earthquakes where there should be no earthquakes. Amen. New Jersey just had a 3.1. Yes. And they're, they're known, I believe, for cold weather and blizzards and things of that nature. Right? There are going to be famine. There's going to be famine in the land. The United States has seen famine like we've never seen in a long, long, long time. So these warnings, these things are starting to come to pass. But we got to pay attention, right? So read that chapter of Mark 24 for yourself. I encourage you to do that. But with all these things that are happening now, the things that are to come, loved ones, we can't be fearful. Amen. We can't be scared. We can't be afraid. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but what? No. Power, love, and a sound mind, right? That's what we're affording. Not like the world, because they have no hope. It's a sad thing. But we have hope. So why are we afraid? What are we afraid of? Right? There's no need to be afraid. We got to get up. We got to stand up tall. Stand up tall. And walk that line out for Jesus. Walk it out. Because that's the only way we're going to pull them in. Is if we're walking it out. In truth. And in love. All right. So... Let me say this. Now's the time for us to be resilient. And why is that? Do you know why that is? Because we win. We win. The book, the book tells us that we win. We have no worries about that. So why not get up? Why not bounce back? Why not say, enemy, you don't get to control me today. You don't get to hold me and bound me today. Because in the name of Jesus, I'm going to walk it out today. In the name of Jesus, I am going to be blessed on today. I'm going to be a blessing on today. Because I belong to the Father. Not to this world. Amen? We don't belong to this world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so this is actually just a call to action, you all. A call to action. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. It's time to get moving. For the kingdom. Because it's in need of advancement right now. Amen. And it's up to us. Actually, it's up to me. It's, and you have to tell yourself it's up to you. It's not up to your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your kids. It's up to you. You know, no one's too young and no one's too old. As long as we have breath in our body, it's time to work. We have things to do. Bless the Lord. So, if you haven't been building up your resilience, it's not too late. Like I said, as long as you have breath in your body, it's time to line up with God and His Word today. Today, don't put it off anymore. There is no excuses. You are good enough. Hallelujah. You are good enough. Hallelujah. You are qualified. Hallelujah. You are qualified. So, when the enemy comes and he, he's whispering in your ear and letting you know that, nah, I heard what your pastor said. But look at you. You know who you are. You know you ain't qualified. You ain't qualified to lead your own life. How are you going to be qualified to bring somebody to Christ? He'll try it. I guarantee you, he'll probably even try it today. But our job yes, first of all, square your shoulders. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Square your shoulders. Yes. I don't even know if you got to put them up. Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. To let that devil know, listen, not today, Satan. That's right. Not today. That's right. My sister brought me a shirt that said, not today, Satan. Yes. And I said, I don't even want to wear a shirt with his name on it, but now I do. Yeah. Not today, Satan. Yeah. I want him to know. So whoever he wants to use yeah. to come and let me and try and tell me that I'm defeated, that I can't do it, I want you to know, not today, Satan. Not today. And you all need to have that attitude. Yeah. 
not today, not tomorrow, not any day. And if it just so happens that he might get you when you're a little down, when you're a little feeble in your body, or when your emotions are running a little hot, you have to get up and remember, not today, not today. Hallelujah, not today. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. So some of you might agree with me, but are silently just asking, well, yeah, Pastor, I agree, I need to be more resilient, I need to learn how to bounce back, but how do, how do I do it? Amen, I'm glad you asked. So we're going to take a, a moment to focus on uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. And the scripture just basically gives us like three key areas to, that we need to build our resistance on. And that's the mind, the body, and the spirit. So let me get that here because I didn't uh, paste it there. So let me just read it to you all really quickly. All right. And I'm going to read it to you again at the end. But this first time I'm going to read it to you from the NLT version. Okay. And it reads uh, as such. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable, always working enthusiastically for the Lord. Yes. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Amen? Amen. 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 So, so that's something I want you to remember. It. Remember, we're going to come back to it in, in a minute. But keep that in your mind. So, so those three, three areas, our mind, our body, and our spirit, those are the three areas that the Lord asked me to share with you all. Because that's the area that he gave me. And I know that that's the areas I need to work on first. Many other areas that fall in between and underneath those things. But my body and spirit. So, number one, we must be resilient in our mind. right? So the scripture tells us that we have to be steadfast in our mind. We have to believe that because we're saved, we win. right? We have to remember that. Believe it. Don't let anybody take that from you. Because you're saved, you win. Hallelujah. And we have to make up in our minds to always get up. Always get up. You have to make that up in your mind. No one else can do that for you. Make it up in your mind to always get up. So when the enemy comes, like I said, in your mind, to place doubt, to place fear, confusion, and excuses, be resilient. Loved ones, be resilient. Be resilient. Get up and fulfill your purpose every day. Every day. I don't care if you can't get through the whole entire list of to do's for that day. You make sure you do something to reveal your purpose in that day. If you're sick and you're and you're confined to your home or you're confined to your bed, if you're not paralyzed and in a coma, there's something that you can do. There's something that you can do. Even if it's just picking up your word to read it or if it's just praying to the Lord, fulfill your purpose every day. Every day. We also need to meditate on God's word day and night because doing so will help us build our, resi our resiliency. It helps us, the word. It's health to our bodies. And, and it tells us, uh, that's, our, that's my side note, James 1 and 22. It, uh, and it tells us, it reminds us, it reminds us that if we listen to God's word, Elder just said it earlier when he read the scripture. We can't just be hearers of the word. We have to be doers of the word. Right? We have to be doers of the word. Otherwise, we're just fooling ourselves. You can fool yourself all day long, but we're never fooling the Lord. We're never fooling God. Ever. I'm telling you, I know so many people who think they are so slick. So slick. And think that they're fooling me, fooling my husband, fooling you all. They're just fooling themselves. They're just fooling themselves. Amen. So if they're not fooling us, how come they don't know that they're not fooling God? Amen. Mm. Okay, all right. Amen. So, okay, back to uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Number two is we need to be resilient in our bodies. So how do we do that? So the obvious things, you know, exercising, right? But the Travers got that. Bishop got that. Elder got that. I don't know about the rest of you. I just know those three. I don't know. I don't know about anybody. Else. Those three got that. Eating, eating healthy foods, right? Nourishing our body. Staying hydrated. Getting enough sleep, right? I'm guilty of uh, everything I just mentioned. Um, and laughing as often as possible. Oh, yeah. Laughter is medicine to the soul, but to the body as well. We need to laugh as often as possible. This world is 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 is, is, is sad, mm -hmm. and it causes a, a lot of a lot of just heartbeat 
uh, uh, emotions within us. So we need to laugh as often as we can, right? But those are the obvious things. Those are the basic things, right? We also need to be planted. We need to be planted in our faith, in our direction, the direction that the Lord has told us to go, and in our calling, right? We got to be planted. The word says, be immovable. Yes. We need to be immovable in those things. In our faith, in our direction, in our calling. We can't be easily swayed, loved ones. We can't be easily swayed by opinions right. of others. Right. right? Have you heard, oh man, you, you going down to that church again? Uh -huh. Man, weren't you just down there on Tuesday? Right. <laughs> You're crazy. Do they pay you for it? Oh, so you oh you just you just giving them your time. You just freely giving up your time. Man, that's crazy. And then what? You going back on Sunday, right? Tell them you're going back on Sunday. You hear people, they'll say that to you. They're like, girl, what are you talking about? Didn't you just have Bible study on Wednesday? Now it's women's Bible study on Friday? What? Then there's prayer at 9.30 on, on Saturday? Then you get up and go on Sunday? Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Don't be swayed by the opinion of others. Amen. Because we easily could be. Because we're tired in our body. Right? Sometimes we may have a worried spirit. I mean, even though we're not supposed to, it happens to us, right? And when those things are happening, the opinion of others can take a toll on us, mm -hmm. and we can be swayed mm -hmm. to their opinion. Amen. Right? right? And if we're swayed to their opinion, we put the hands up to the Word of God, right? right? Mm -hmm. We're turning our back on the Word of God. We, can know, we cannot even be swayed by our own feelings and emotions because they will lie to us. They will lie to us. Yes, you feel a certain way, but what is the reason behind those feelings? That's where some of the lies come from. Why you feel the way that you do? Why you feel like so-and-so disrespected you? Why you feel like the church let you down and they weren't there for you? Why you feel like you deserve this, that, and the other, but brother so-and-so got it before you? Don't let the enemy play with you. Amen. Don't let him play with you. When you start feeling like that, that is your time to get on your knees and ask God, Lord, what's happening? Show me what's going on. Because I know that these feelings I have right now, they're not of you. And if there's any truth to anything that I am feeling right now, illuminate God and tell me where it's coming from and what I need to do about it. We always have a job to do. We can't just wait and sit back and allow and wait for God to do everything for us. We have a job to do. And a lot of times our job is to shut up and fall down on our knees and pray. Not pick up the phone and call sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Because brother so-and-so got their own opinion about what you're talking about. Sister so-and-so, she can't, for the life of her, can't keep her opinion to herself. Right? So don't pick up the phone. Don't open up Facebook. You go to God. That's where you go. That's your refuge. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox on that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going <clears throat> to share with something with you. In being resilient in our bodies, I don't know, personally, no, of a more resilient person in my life than that man in that corner. In my life. I'm not talking about your life, I'm talking about my life. Amen. Our bishop, my husband, I don't know a more resilient man. Amen. Since the inception of this church nine years ago, he's had breathing issues, right? Before all of his surgeries, he's had sinus issues where he couldn't breathe through his nose. He could only breathe through his mouth, right? Can you imagine? And the Lord had to let me see. He let me see one time, one time, what it felt like to be my husband. Yes. Where my nose wasn't clogged. It was closed. Yes. Closed yes. to where no air could get yes. through. And I got to experience how breathing through my mouth to live worked for this man for all these years. But did he lay down and say, God, I can't do it, God. I know you called me to this work, but I can't do it. I need you to heal me right now. Fix me right now. I'm sure he asked God to heal him. I know he did. But he didn't. 
He didn't. Not right away. And what did he do? He kept working his nine to five. He kept serving in the church. He kept preaching to us, Amen. to you. He kept preaching. Amen. He stood up here every Sunday and preached because the man preached. However many, 52 Sundays a year, 50, however many Sundays they are, he preached, breathing through his mouth. That's resiliency. That's bounce back, right? That's God first. So now let's fast forward. I'm still using him. I'm a pretty resilient woman. I am. Not more than he is. So let's fast forward to his sickness. You know, because he's had some surgeries to help him with that. And, and, and now he has his smell back. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has his smell back, right? I'm so excited for that. Because at first of all, I was thinking, well, what the heck am I wearing perfume for? He can't smell it. But then I said, well, I still like to smell good, so I guess I should still wear it. But now he can smell. Right? He walked to the house one day after a surgery and he opened the door and he was like, oh my goodness, is this what I've been missing? Because I've been cooking dinner. Oh my goodness, is this what I've been missing? This smell that's all through our house, right? But, but listen, fast forward to this sickness, this pneumonia that took him out, almost took him out, I should say, that laid him down. He was walking around for almost three weeks with pneumonia, not knowing it, right? Some of you have gone through this. Not knowing it, thinking that, okay, I get sick every year, I can't breathe, I need my decadrone shot, whatever it's called, so I need to go to the doctor and get that shot so I can breathe. But it wasn't just he couldn't breathe, because it wasn't just his lung. He was coughing, right? He was coughing, but you could hear it in his chest, right? So I'm thinking, okay, baby, you need to go and go to the doctor, because everything that you've been doing at home, breathing treatments, you know, all these things, medication not working. So one night, the night before he went in, he laid there and he coughed and he coughed. And, and when he was breathing, he was shaking. Every time he would breathe in, he was shaking. So I laid there and I prayed. And I prayed and I prayed. I said, God, this is not the same thing. I said, baby, do you think you need to go to the ER right now? No. I'm, 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 I'm just going to go to the urgent care in the morning. I'll be fine. I just need to go to sleep. I'll be fine. That's what he tells me. Now you look at him. Now I can't pick him up and put him in the car, right? <laughs> so what can I do but pray? If he's not gonna get up, I can't make him. Amen. So all I could do was pray. I didn't sleep well that night, and he didn't sleep, because he didn't sleep well. But the next morning he got up, I woke up, and he was sleeping, and I woke him up, I said, babe. I said, are you getting up? Are you going to the urgent care? You need to be the first one there. He says, yeah, I was gonna go about nine o'clock. I said, no, you need to get up. Amen. Get up right now and go to the urgent care. Okay, so he got up and sat outside of bed, but he couldn't do it, you all. He couldn't just get up and get dressed and go. He had to take steps. He had to get up and sit on the side of the bed first. Then he had to wait. Then he had to get up, go in the bathroom, brush his teeth, wash his face, do everything he needed to do. Then he had to sit back down. Wait, wait to catch his breath. He got dressed, got his keys, got ready to leave, got to the door, turned around and sat back down on the bed. I'm like, I said, okay, Jesus. I said, let me drive you. Let me just wake the kids up and let me drive you. No, 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 I got it. I'm gonna drive myself. I got it. Just stay here with the kids. He drove himself to the urgent care. Don't know if he was the first one there, but when he got there, his report to me was he almost collapsed. So when that happened, the security guard at the urgent care ran and got a nurse to come out. The nurse came out and the nurse assessed him and ran in the back and got him some oxygen and put him on oxygen. Right there in the waiting room. From that time, they got him in to see the doctor. It happened quickly because he couldn't breathe. They got him in to see the doctor. The doctor assessed him and the doctor asked him some questions. But the thing was, they said, you need to get to the urgent care, sir, because we've been observing you on this option for a while and it's not moving. You were at what? 83%. 83 oh my God. For, for those of you who don't know, for an asthmatic, that is very low. Yes. Very low. 83%. So he said, okay, all right, I'll go to the urgent care. They said, no, 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 you can't drive yourself. You won't make it. You need to go by ambulance, right? So he did, he went by ambulance. Now we're gonna fast forward, he got there. They rushed him in, put more oxygen on him, right? 
put him, got him ready, put him in a room. He told me the doctor looked in his eyes. The the, the, the urgent care, I mean, the emergency room doctor looked in his eyes and said, "You have pneumonia." Just like no testing, he looked at him and said, "You have pneumonia." So Pastor Bishop was in the hospital for five days, you all. Five days. Why? Number one, because he didn't get up when he should have gotten up and go and went to the doctor. Because he thought it was business as usual. He thought it was his every year uh, flu, right? He thought it was business as usual, and it wasn't. Everything is not what it seems, right? Everything is not what it seems. We have to read, we have to, Jesus, we have to dig deep to find out what's going on a lot of times. And sometimes we need to put our pride aside and say, I'm going right now. Right now. I'm going to do it right now. I don't care what it looks like to anybody. I'm going to do it right now. Because it could very well save your life. Or someone else's. So, what are you saying? When this man got into the hospital, he spent a couple of days there on four and five liters of oxygen. First day, five liters. Next day, four liters. Then he went down to three liters. But I'm telling you, he could not get up on his own to go to the bathroom without having to just pause to stay in the bathroom to get up enough strength to get up. But he didn't call anybody, you all. He waited. He waited. And he got up enough strength to get up and go back to his bed. Then he was laying there with no oxygen on his last day. But they didn't know. When they walked in, the nurses were like, Pastor Shepherd, what are you doing? You don't have your oxygen on. He said, well, I haven't had it on for an hour. And your oxygen level was what? 94. Amen. Right? Because the hand of God is on his life. Hallelujah. Because God honors us. God honors our get up. He honors our resiliency. Amen. He honors that. So when he saw this man, his son, say, Lord, I'm not just going to lay here. I'm going to get up. I'm going to do my part. God says, I got the rest. Amen. I got the rest. Amen. And that's what he says to us, Lois. He says that to us a lot of times. When we think we have to do it all on our own, and we're scared, and we don't know how we're going to do it, God says, all I'm asking you to do is take your steps. Yes, all I'm asking you to do is do yes, your part Lord. and allow me to do mine. Thank you, Jesus. Get out of my way and allow me to do yes. what I want to do for you. Amen, Pastor. Yes. I spend a lot of time on number two because that's our bodies. We are resilient in our bodies because... We mess them up a lot of times. Yes. We mess our bodies up a lot. Yes. A lot. We do things to ourselves, yes. knowingly and unknowingly, yes. to mess up and put ourselves in a lot of the health situations that we're in. Mm -hmm. It's important to take care of ourselves. Yes. Right? So, that was his story. You have your own story. Right? You know people who have a story. We need to make sure that we take care of ourselves. We need to make sure that we take care of our families. Yes. Mothers, fathers, take care of your kids. Take care of your spouses. And then let's branch out. Make sure other people are taking care of themselves. In the back, I'm watching them right now. Facebook Live, you can't see this, but I'm watching them in the back. So Terry is back here. She's preparing these bags because we have some leftover bags from yesterday when we did that big, huge food giveaway. She's preparing it. And inside those bags are healthy foods. Amen. Healthy foods. Amen. Good tasting things, but they're healthy foods. We have to be mindful to take advantage of things like that. A lot of times we think, oh, I can't afford to, to shop. I can't afford to shop organic. I can't afford to shop, you know, Whole Foods and all these things. Maybe you cannot. But make sure you're not in the fast food line every day. So if you're going to the store and you're not buying organic, that's okay. Make sure you're buying it from the store and you're cooking it yourself. Don't be in the fast food line all the time because that's not good for our bodies. Amen. 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 So that's number two. Number three, the last one. We need to be resilient in our spirit. Amen. Mm. In our spirit. We have to feed our spirit and starve our flesh. Yeah. Amen. 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 Feed our spirit and starve our flesh. How do we do that? All right. Here's some examples. Give God praise. Amen. Give him praise. Amen. Show him. Show him how much you love him. How much you love him. 
Tell them how great he is in your life, right? That's feeding your spirit. That's pleasing him, but it's also feeding your spirit. Pray. But pray with thanksgiving, not always with petition. Right. Right? We're good with asking, asking. Yes. Daddy, daddy, give me this. Daddy, daddy, I need daddy, daddy, I need it. Right? We need to start praying with thanksgiving in our yeah, heart yeah. and on our lips. Thank you, Jesus. Let him know, Lord, I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm, I thank you for everything that you've done for me, for my family, for my, my community, for, for my church. I'm grateful, Father. I'm grateful for how you allowed me to assist, sister so-and-so. God, I'm grateful how you healed my body, God, when I thought I was going to die. I'm grateful how you spared my life. Yes, yes. Thank you. I just thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Go to him with thanksgiving. It's going to lift your spirit, I guarantee you. Again, meditate on his word. Because it's literally life to our, to our bodies, to our entire bodies. Entire bodies. Be generous. What? Be generous? How's that going to lift my spirit? Amen. It absolutely lifts your spirit. Amen. It feeds your spirit. So let me tell you, I was reading an article. Now I can't remember if it was in Forbes magazine or Psychology Today. But I was reading. And in that article, it showed a study as to how generosity is linked to the hormone that we have called dopamine. Yeah. And dopamine is, another word for dopamine is, is the, the happy, the feel good hormone, right? So generosity, giving to others, giving of our time, our talent, our treasure, our money, yeah. all of that, being generous is linked to our, our well-being and how we feel. So be generous. It's going to feed your spirit. You always hear it's better to give than receive. It is absolutely true. Amen. Believe it. If you haven't tried it in a long time, yes. try it. Amen. See how your spirit feels and how it's, how it's lifted when you give. Amen. So, you know, some of the ways that we can give, we talked about it. But when we serve others, we're serving God. You yes. have to remember that. It's not just about the person. Because through serving that person, you're ultimately fulfilling what God wants you to do. Right? So we have to remember that. Also, it takes the focus off of us when we give to others. Right? So no matter what we might be going through, no matter how the devil has been trying to beat us up, no matter how we feel, giving to others, being generous and giving to others, serving others, takes the focus off of us and puts it back on God. Right? It allows the Holy Spirit to work within us so that we're lifted as well. We're not just blessing, we're being blessed. Okay. We have to remember that. So be generous, be generous. In starving our flesh though, that's, that's how we feed it. But this is how we're gonna starve our flesh, right? Certain things, certain things we can't do. Like we were talking about, certain foods we can't eat. You know. What hot chips do to your stomach, right? You know. Right? You know what a lot of these other things do. You know what smoking cigarettes do to your lungs, right? You know what a lot of things do. Alcohol does to, to your liver. Pills do to your liver. You know. Yet and still, we still do it. Right. Certain things we're going to have to cut out. Habits. Certain habits we have. Certain songs we listen to. Certain movies we watch, right? Certain places we go, certain people we entertain. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. No more time. Certain people yes. we entertain. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I know personally, thank you, Lord Jesus. I know personally how this church was hit by the gossip of two individuals. Two individuals. Just went, it just went all around the church. The thing about it is, one person entertained the other. If you don't entertain them, they can't spread the venom. The enemy can't, he can't win if you don't entertain them. It might be somebody in your own family. You can't entertain them. Certain yeah. people we have to distance ourselves from. And even if it's somebody in your own home, hmm. you better go, go to your room. There you, go. you better go pray. You better make sure that your mind is stayed on Jesus. So whatever it is, whatever that nonsense is, they're trying to speak to you and into your spirit, you can't receive it. Amen. Certain things we just have to do. 
to make sure that we starve our flesh. So, take an honest look at yourself as often as you can. Uh, how to feed your flesh, how to starve your flesh. But Galatians 5 and 17 tells us that the flesh, you know, is always warring against the spirit. Yes. Right? Always warring against the spirit. So follow me with this really quickly. When we're physically dehydrated, right? When we're physically dehydrated, most of us know, we know what that feels like. Right? We know what our bodies feel like. And if you don't know what your body feels like, you need to get to know yourself a little bit better. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You, you need to get to know your body a little bit better. But in the same light, when we're spiritually dehydrated, we need to know what that looks like as well and what that feels like as well. Yeah. Yeah. And on the same token, if you don't know, you need to get to know the word a little bit better. Yeah. You need to get a little bit closer to God yeah. if you don't know when you're spiritually dehydrated. And then you need to know, what can you do? We just talked about some of the things to do to feed your spirit, right? Get to know the Lord, loved ones. Get to know him, get to know his word. Therefore, you have the ammunition to fight the enemy when he comes because he's coming and he is relentless, relentless because he is resilient. He doesn't care how many times you throw the word at him, he'll be back. And we have to be the same way. We have to be the same way. So listen, I'm gonna close with this. We're gonna go back to 1 Corinthians, uh, 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 15 and five. But this time I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible, and I want you to catch it from the Message Bible. And it reads as such. It says, with all this going on for us, meaning God and how he has positioned us and set us up and blessed us. With all this going on for us, my dear friends, stand your ground. And don't hold back. Throw yourself into the work of the master. Confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, now that's reason to praise God right there because nothing we do for him is in vain. Nothing we do for him is a waste of time or effort. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so be sure to be resilient. Be sure to be resilient. Be sure that you're going to be tougher, stronger than the enemy. You're going to get up. Amen? Amen. You're, going to, you, you're going to get up because it's in you to do it. Yes. It's in you. Hallelujah, it's in you. Be sure to be resilient because you remember that we win. There is no greater guarantee on your investment than the fact that we win. Amen. No greater guarantee that the world can give you except the fact we win, y'all. We win. Hallelujah. And we, if we don't just win in the end, we can win right now. We can win right here today. If we, want to, if, we, if, we, if we are determined to be resilient, we can do it today. So get up in your mind. Get up in your body. And get up in your spirit. And run, y'all. Don't walk. Run. Run for Jesus. And watch how those blessings fall in your life. Run for him. And you don't have to worry about what he's going to do for you. All those things will be added unto you yeah. because he loves you yeah. and he knows exactly what you stand in the need of. Right. And he's even there to give you some of your wants. Yes. Yes. All we have to do is stand up for him. Yes. Amen. Stand up for him. Amen. 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 And in the words of our own councilwoman, Jan Pye, I'm done. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you. Yet she knew the assignment, she accepted the assignment, and she leaned on you for the assignment. She showed her own level of resilience. And so now, God, we pray that you pour back into her to restore all that she poured out, and then some, for being a good and faithful servant, feeding her sheep on today. We speak strength, we speak peace, and we speak rest in her room today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. This is God. Uh, if anyone does not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, victory is not guaranteed to you. She just spoke that we win because we have Jesus. What that means is that you believe 
that he came from heaven to earth, took on the form of a slave, a human being, died a criminal's death on the cross, took punishment, bled and died. You believe that his blood was shed for your sins. And because of that, you believe that regardless of what you've done, if you just believe, it's all been covered by the blood. But it doesn't stop there. It believes that they buried you. Believe, it means that you believe they buried him. And on the third day of morning, they went to look for him. He was no longer there. It means that they went to the tomb and he was no longer there. And it gives you excitement because that means that he said, as she said from Luke 19, since he's not there, he's somewhere preparing to come back and get us. And if you want to go back with him, you have to know him. That's victory. So if you don't know Jesus on today, I want to make sure that you get to know him because it is our job to ensure that you have an opportunity for victory. So if you're in the house, just wave your hand. If you're on Facebook Live, just comment, it's me. We will contact you right after service. But I believe everybody in the house is saved. All right, Facebook Live, if that's you, we will get to you right after service. Listen, we have food bags in the back for those that are here, please. Take some of this food home. There's all kind of produce and good things in those bags. We had a huge food giveaway yesterday. And, um, Sister Terry, thank you for leading the Word of Life team with Councilman Roger Nunez. Um, I don't want to get into any of the names because I forget everything. But I came here and I saw she had a team of people that were just cheerful and they were serving. It was beautiful to see. And um, Councilman Nunez and his um, colleague Rudy, they put on some things from their end. And it was a drive through pull up. And we still have some bags left, so please take some bags home. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. I'm uh, leaving time to go pray yourself before we leave. Listen, listen. I laid in that hospital bed, and I'm getting messages now. People saying, man, I thought we were better than that. Why won't you tell me you're in the hospital? I had to let them know my father just found out yesterday. My grandfather, Deacon Shepherd, we literally just told him yesterday. I said, because when they admitted me, they said, you're gonna be here four to five days, but you're gonna be fine. I said, what I didn't want is paranoia. I didn't want people worrying. Why is he still there if he's gonna be fine? And can I be honest with y'all? I don't trust witches. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. Capital W-I-T-C-H-E-S. Yeah. I don't trust witches. Yeah. Because I'm a man of God, because I stand on the word of God, I am hated for Christ's sake. That's what the word says. Yeah. And everybody who comes through these doors smiling, saying I love Bishop, does not mean Bishop any well. And so because I know that and I discern that in the spirit, there are certain things that people will never know about what's going on with me. They will hear the testimony, but they will never know the process. So this wasn't an offense to anyone. This was the doctor assuring me in the morning, you're going to be just fine. But we need to keep you for four to five days because the pneumonia in your lungs had advanced. This started with me. January 24th, wow. we were at the gym, and I remember telling him, I don't feel good, I have no energy, something's wrong. That whole two, three days, something's not right. So for the people that said, well, you just need to rest, I need you all to understand this. As of our anniversary of January 30th, I was in the bed every day, with the exception of Sundays. Brother Travis started the youth program. I went the first Saturday to say hello, Weeks two and three, I texted him and said, I can't come. Something's not right with me. I need to stay in the bed. So I stayed in bed for two weeks with the exception of Sunday. Ended up in the hospital for a week in bed. Have been in the bed all week. Y'all, this ain't respirator. Okay? This ain't, and I'm telling you all this because sometimes we stay up meaning well, but it's really irritating. All right? This is not a rest thing. It was a spiritual attack. Okay? But God is good because we have victory. We have, we have victory. So for all of us, not just me, for all of us that may be dealing with illness, you may know someone that is in the church. I'm going to ask you this. Stop speculating. Just pray. Yes. Yes. When, since when did you have to know the diagnosis to plead the blood? Yeah. <laughs> why, why do you have to know that it's cancer to plead the blood of Jesus? Why can't you just plead it? Amen. Why do you have to know that it's coke? Just plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. Cover us all in prayer. And I'm not just saying that for me. We have several on our prayer list right now dealing with various ailments. And you don't see them here because they're at home dealing with these ailments. Please don't speculate. Don't, don't feed your flesh. Feed your spirit and pray for these people. All right? Because trust me, when it's your turn. Just say, yeah, you hear me? Not if. We all going to go through something. 
All right, when it's your turn, you just want people praying. You don't want to explain. You don't want to write letters. You don't want to text. You just want to be able to say, can you pray for me? And leave it right there. All right? Okay. So, for everybody watching, that will watch that. And that will watch that. I'm fine. I sat on the organ today. Didn't need any oxygen. Right before I got up, I checked my meter. I'm at 95. The Lord says the same amen. amen. And for an asthmatic, 93 is normal. I'm at 95 right now, okay? The Lord says the same. I'll be preaching on Sunday. I would have preached today if the Lord didn't say have a seat. So I'm fine. Amen. Word of life, we are fine, okay? We have a general church meeting coming. It'll be announced. It'll be on Zoom on Saturday. So if you're a member of this church, I address those in-house today with that portion. Saturday at noon, we're going to do it at Zoom and address it again. Uh, with some, some, some other church business things and some leadership uh, maneuvering and all that. But the COVID concerns from the rumor and gossips that we're trying to be thrown about the church, if you want to hear directly from the leaders now, Saturday at noon, meet us on Zoom. If you decide that I've heard enough, I don't want to be here for the rest of the meeting, go ahead and log off. But you will not be able to say, Bishop didn't tell me. So if you really want to know, Saturday at noon, we'll address every question that you have. If you want to know and you're not there on Zoom, I'm going to assume that some people don't want resolution, they just want mess. Right. And I don't chase mess yeah. at all. Yeah. I don't chase mess. I told my wife, once your ability to command oxygen is snatched from you to the point where you have to depend on someone to give you oxygen, and then you have to fight to learn to get it back, by the grace of God, you make a decision that you'll never waste oxygen again. Amen. So I'm in no mood right to discuss rumors, gossip, and this is still on Facebook Live because I want you to share everything else, share this. I have, no, I have no desire to chase rumors, gossip, post what you want to post, type what you want to type. If you're big enough and bad enough, call me. Let's talk about it. But I'm not chasing ghosts, okay? Right. I, I don't have oxygen to chase ghosts like that, all right? Yeah. Purpose Driven Church says we're chasing purpose, not opinions. Yeah. I'm chasing purpose, not perception. So whatever it is that you go out and want to make up in your mind about who we are and what we stand for, boo boo, you go ahead and believe that. We're going to keep in, in that to the kingdom. That's what we're going to do, okay? All right, so if you have a gift to give, he'll put it on the screen. You can dare into the back. You can drop it off in the back. Our children look so beautiful. Thank you all for being socially distant and helping with those bags. Take a food bag with you if you know a neighbor that needs groceries. You have a family member, please take it. You don't even have to mention word of life. Just take it and say, God bless you. I was blessed, I want to be a blessing to you. If your children need an extracurricular activity, the chant, Brother Travis is right there. Saturday, yeah, right there. Saturday morning at 9 a.m. at Desert Highland. There's six weeks left? Six, five weeks left. It lasts 50 minutes, 50 minutes of of interval training. He's training them with, with a good brother, a good friend of ours, brother Mike Cartwell. He's out there training with them and, it's, and, and they're doing a great service for the community. They're raising proceeds and it's coming to help, um, help our youth programs here. But the bigger part is he's giving back of his gift. He's multiplying his gift and he's making disciples with fitness on, on that field out there. If your children want to be involved, please, Saturday, um, I'll be there from going forward because now, now I'm better. So, but the next five weeks, I'll be there as well. Um, you, because you might say, I don't know anybody out there. I'll be there, okay? Now, I'm telling you, if you drop your child off there and you're saying, Bishop, he's here, if your child act up, my belt is coming with me, okay? <laughs> you know. So if you drop off a of mic here, they're going to they reflect me. They shepherd for that hour. I'm just letting you know now. All right? Okay, just letting you know. I'm not going to let them disturb what's been going on because they don't know how to act when you're not around. My belt travels well, okay? All right. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's a wonder. Okay. All right, so the gifts are on the screen. Um, Deacon Darren's in the back waiting for you. Minister Tommy is going to come and give us our benediction. Listen, we love you. We, man, I love you all. We love you all. We love you all. Thank you for praying for us. But one thing about setbacks, they always push you back stronger. We're going to be all right. Okay. Um, Sister Terry is going to dismiss, uh, dismiss everyone after I give the prayer. She's going to dismiss you by peace. Okay, well, the word of life.
the ministry of overcomers. I've heard it today. I've heard the pastor emphasize on how we are overcomers, how we can be overcomers, and how we will be overcomers. We just have to live it. We just have to believe it. And we know that faith is, is a spiritual principle. We tapped into God's creative mind where we can change our situation each and every day. But let's change it in our spiritual life first before we can change it in the natural. And then praying, I always ask the Holy Spirit to, 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 to lead me in prayer. But I also like uh, uh, Luke and how his disciples asked him how to pray. And Jesus delivered the Lord's Prayer and staying with the Bible, staying with the Bible words, I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and deliver us from evil and deliver us from our trespasses as we can deliver us from those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever in Jesus' name. Amen.